ชิบิบซู ladies and gentlemen uh, today I'm very uh, honored to have uh, Bong d o c h s a r e t a tour operator who joins our uh, discussion today on uh, tourism in Siem Reap uh, Bong s a r e t uh, thank you for joining us today uh, I think we will focus on uh, tourism in Siem Reap and how we can help promote this industry and focus specifically on tourism products that will be uh, 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 driving for for a future growth of this industry in the future. So, let without further ado, let me uh, start with very simple question. We all aware that uh, Cambodia tourism has been uh, very uh, important. It's a key driving force of economic growth over the past mm -hmm. decade. However, after COVID nineteen pandemics. Uh, the, the industry has suffered a lot, and uh, we haven't seen uh, a coming back of this very sector so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, incoming foreign tourists into the country, especially in Siem Reap province, continue to be low mm -hmm. compared to the other country in the region. My very first question to you: Why this could happen? Yes. First of all, thank you for uh, inviting me today. Um, Cambodia is it really uh, the great place, uh, and uh, I can say it's a good opportunity to uh, meet up and to share uh, the challenges that we have faced in Siem Reap. Of course, uh, Siem Reap tourism is not just Siem Reap, but the whole Cambodia and the region, the global, have faced suffer from the COVID pandemic. Uh, all the tourism infrastructures were destroyed by the uh, pandemic. Mm -hmm. No people travel and afraid of the uh, infection of the, uh, the disease. Yeah. So um, after the uh, post-COVID, at the post-COVID era, that uh, Cambodia have struggling to reopen the uh, the door, they have yeah. to welcome all the international yeah. uh, tourists. And you can see that uh, many effort from the government uh, to uh, open the skyline yeah. to reconnect all the connectivity from across the uh, the country, from the global and within the Asian countries. Mm -hmm. yeah. As part of ourselves, that as a private sectors, myself as a two operators, yeah. we did uh, do joint with the government mm. and with all the association and the community to mm. build up our industry, mm. especially to promote and uh, branding our destinations. We can still uh, suffer and see that the very slow growth of the tourism into Cambodia, especially in Siem Reap, to the main gateways mm. to the. Uh, Temple of Angkor, the wonder of yep. Cambodia. Um, the problem uh, we can say that there are many uh, factors that uh, we resulted from the pandemic. First of all, Cambodia is a small country, mm -hmm. and we have still lack of uh, infrastructures, and we still have the uh, lack of resources comparing to other country. Uh, currently, if you compare to the nearby country, they have built hundred years ago before mm -hmm. us, so they are ahead. Ahead of, uh, even though they suffer from the pandemic, yeah. but the uh, facility still remains. So to, re to restart it, mm -hmm. they are much easier than us. They have full of the resources. Comparing to our internal is, of course, thank you the government and to our private sector that we join force together to build up the industry. Mm -hmm. But still we suffer it, and it's, we see the yeah. slow growth. We slow growth. Yeah. But we cannot uh, blame anyone. Mm. This is the, the fact that we have to uh, accept it. Yeah. Accept yeah. it. Yeah. So how can we uh, get more, you know, flow to the country yeah. and uh, to get the tourist attraction to this? Um, currently, I, I see many activity that uh, we are doing to mm. attract the, the tourists to be uh, visiting back to yeah. Cambodia oh. through many uh, promotional uh, campaign and uh, through the uh, domestically and internationally yeah. with uh, the new uh, creativity with the link route with the nearby country yeah. like to India. Currently, uh, the government have just opened the door and uh, been the collaboration with yeah. the Indian uh, Tourism Association. And the airline uh, from India and Cambodia to collaborate yeah. together, and to bring in the to, to exchange the cultural between of the, the country to country among the Asian Asia Pacific region. Yeah. So uh, of course, uh, thing cannot be happen by uh, in a couple of nights or yeah. a couple of weeks. So of course, it will take some times. Yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Obviously, we have to accept it. Yeah. yeah. Like you have mentioned earlier, it have been a long journey, yeah. and of course. There's going to be a lot of work to do for us mm -hmm. all, not just the government, but the other exactly. stakeholders. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Next question will be 
very simple, but I think many tourists are looking for, I think across the website when they're trying to plan a trip to Cambodia, especially mm -hmm. in Siem Reap province. I just want to know, assuming that a tourist is planning a trip or visit here in mm -hmm. Siem Reap, can you tell me what are the five, what are the best five places or maybe best, best five thing to do mm -hmm. if they're coming here, mm -hmm. knowing nothing mm -hmm. at all about this country or mm -hmm. this place? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I would uh, refer to a little bit different adapts of the uh, respond to your questions. Uh, based on the fact, um, what we should do to attract tourists to our destinations. Mm -hmm. So from uh, at post-COVID, um, from the pandemic has completely changed the, 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 the mind of the traveler. Yeah. And the, the traveler, the, the, the tourists, uh, they, they have uh, changed a lot, you mm -hmm. know, like the trend in the travel industry, mm -hmm. it completely, I can say that the new evolution in the, in the travel industry, mm -hmm. people are looking for something more experienced, adventurous for personnel and uh, for the community. Yeah. So um, before I respond to your specific questions, uh, I would add up uh, specifically that uh, we do need to branding and mm -hmm. to uh, make a focus on uh, promoting and uh, you know, to promote our destination to the goal we are at our desired market, at our desired destination. So currently we are being lack of mm. that. Mm. Look to the social media, of okay, course, so we accept it. Um, you can see uh, various and available uh, social media promoting of domestic tourists um, across uh, Cambodia with uh, TikTok, uh, Facebook, with uh, many other social media here. But it's not enough. Mm. From those content, we see that still the lack is not, it seems that we don't really have much potential in it. In the same time, if you look to the government platforms with the Ministry of Tourism, how many websites from the Ministry mm. of Tourism that has been actively promoting our destination? Currently, some information is uh, really uh, out of date, I can say. Right. So to be specifically, and this is the truth, we have to accept it. Yep. And uh, personally, with our uh, own, you know, like with the individual company, we do promoting and updating every week or almost every two months or every six months or every year. So we do update from where the, the new product going to be added. Yeah. That concerning referring to your question. Mm. So um, when we have a, a good thing, right. you want to place it to the market, of course, mm. you have to introduce that good thing, the product, to the people, consumer surrounding. Yeah. So if the consumer, they don't know about the product, how can they buy it? Of course, there are so many details mm. with regard to the history, with regard to the process of the product, with regard to what the product pur uh, purpose and what will benefit to the, uh, you know, the buyer, yeah. benefit to the, uh, the, the, the community or manpower. So all are in the ecosystem. Mm. So we have to share a fair balance between mm. those in the exchange of uh, consumer and the uh, sellers. So this have to, to be very uh, fairly managed. Mm. So back to your question. If you look to Cambodia, we have rich of resources. Mm. Um, I can say um, Cambodia, uh, Siem Reap, mainly as the main gateway to the world mm. heritage site, which we say is a unique cultural destination. Mm. So what is a uh, unique cultural destination? So in terms of the word of unique cultural destination, it say that the destination that no one can replicate, mm. no one can make a copy. But we are not just only enjoying of the word itself that no one can copy, but we do nothing. <laughs> if we do right, promoting our uniqueness to the yep. world, we promoting to the right destination, target to the right audience, of course, this mm. will be the result. People get awareness of the destination. Mm. They know about our product. Mm. So first is the unique destination with our cultural uh, area like Sim Reap uh, with Angkor Wat and all the temple here, right? Yeah. And then our natural resource. So beside Angkor, mm. we were talking about visitor to bring visitor to beyond Angkor. Mm. So not only just to everyone visit Angkor, Angkor every yeah, day. Yeah. So it's really boring. So when we come to this term, we are talking about the new sustainability. So what is sustainability? So we have to think about that, how to support local supplier, local community. Mm. So we have to build up, to add up with the, the element which is combined to a taste of the product. Mm. Such as like pagoda, uh, religious. 
So religious play a lot of uh, potential, I can say. Um, Buddhism play a lot of potential. Mm. Many tourists in the global uh, market, they also impressed with Buddhist uh, philosophy. Mm. So before we were talking about what is Buddhist philosophy. <laughs> so right now we really impressed for them. They believe that Buddhism it really play very important for the development in the society, mm. uh, development of the community and and heal the spirit and mind of human being and each will from individual and developments. So you can have a peace in mind. As long as you have peace in mind, you will have a prosper yeah, in, the, in, in your thinking, yeah. in your thought, and you have a, a pleasantness in size. So you can decide, you can uh, think over what is the, the positive thing and do a good thing in the future. Mm. So I can say that the, the product in the um, Pukhra uh, Pakuda in the cultural destination combined with the uh, add up of our ritual in the region, uh, visit the Pakuda or visiting some, conducting any event like uh, pilgrimage with yeah. the meditations or anything that we can say like the horn bell. Hmm. So have you heard about horn bell? Not, not okay. so much. About, so Hornbell yeah. is one of the uh, is good uh, product which is uh, very famous for Australian uh, tourists. Mm. So many Australian tourists looking or some part of the uh, tourists from across uh, Asia Pacific, they're looking for Hornbell. And Cambodia, especially Siem Reap, in the Angkor Temple area, it's the best place mm. that they believe that to, to, to conduct such uh, activity is really very, uh, you know, very good for the tourists and yeah. they're really impressed. And to do hornbell, it really need a uh, uh, space where it resides uh, uh, next to the main temple, like Angkor Wat or yeah. a part of the ancient temple. So yeah. because it's uh, combined with That's many right. activity for them. And I can say this, uh, um, natural uh, adventures, you see, like Phnom Kulen, currently we are promoting for Indian tourists. So Phnom Kulen is one of the uh, holy place. It's the, the empire of the king uh, mm -hmm. Jaya Varamantu from 802. And from there, it's not only the uh, natural mountain, which is uh, uh, it geographical setting is elegantly with the mystically uh, for uh, the area, but it's also the source of human life, mm -hmm. the source to uh, provide of a pure water, and you see the Simri River, we have also the water from Phnom Kulen, and uh, we have uh, many resources there, which uh, people can have many practice, and uh, can absorb tourists to uh, mm. the destination. Yeah. So from this, we can uh, uh, do promote it very well, and people will impress. But we do need to make sure that uh, we manage uh, the area uh, on a sustainable way, yeah. okay, and yeah. for the, the long-term perspective. Mm -hmm. um, beside that, we have our natural cruise along the uh, Mekong River and Tulisap. So I, I, I can I can give you some uh, particular example like Tulisap. From the shore of Tulisap, we have many uh, floating villages. So uh, those villages are not well managed, mm. even though we have a uh, current uh, port which yeah. we serve for tourists to visit the uh, floating uh, community with uh, some element and market with school and uh, hospital all move on the lake in the high season we can see they are uh, doing some activity moving up and down with add up to some activity and people can visit mm. but for me it's still not enough. Mm. not enough we should be able to manage it to be like um, a, a much you know like uh, more add up to the uh, attract the tourists, mm. add up with more activity like uh, along the way to see the shore and the, the long line of the history of the uh, lake depicting and the, uh, you know, like uh, uh, information that provided to uh, the tourists in that one that they know why they make a trip to uh, Tun Le Sap. So uh, before they do any uh, trip to any destination, they should be aware that their goal of the visit, the destination, why they go there to visit, mm. what they want to see and why they, uh, they travel there and what really bring back the value from their visit, mm. their expectation, for That's example. Right. Yeah. So this um, we have been discussing a lot uh, how uh, to transform and uh, we can see some um, you know, uh, barriers in the, uh, uh, against from the, mm. the local community, which is um, um, some facility is not ready to accept 
uh, tourists is not at the international standard or I can say that it's not proper for, for now for tourists to see mm. because we don't want the tourist to expect something that is uh, higher, not higher uh, you know to provide yeah. for the tourist mm. currently we have uh, many things but I don't want to uh, specific uh, to the point because this yeah. is really sad for us yeah yes thank you mr. Sarit. I think you draw our attention to many important issues especially where and how we can do it especially when it comes to promoting uh, tourism side mm -hmm. and the untapped potential in this yeah. industry. Yeah. However, my next question will be to you, but I think from your personal experience as a tour operator, when it comes to developing this, I, I would say a master plan that mm -hmm. would mm -hmm. ensure success ahead for all of us, mm -hmm. who should be responsible for this? All stakeholder or any particular actor in this? Well, actually, uh, this is a very good question and uh, the question that uh, uh, has been answered for years. Mm. Uh, we have been answered for this question, but it's still uh, no activity. Mm. But anyway, we're saying that uh, currently there are some uh, improvements, uh, development on the planning and the project. As you can see that the government has already set up and announced on the master plan, tourism master plan uh, for Siem Reap. And they, they divided the uh, Siem Reap into uh, five category uh, from Phnom Kulen as the, the, the first uh, main pole mm. and Banti Shrey and the Angkor area and city center and uh, Tun Le Sap and the shore and the new uh, Siem Reap city that on the, on the, the last six uh, pole for development. Mm. So based on the current development and based on the master plan which uh, they already clearly mentioned and uh, had been uh, brought to action. So I think um, for this, um, it is clear that the government is the uh, one uh, actor and uh, to be act on this role mm. and with the participation of the private sector, of course, uh, from the community. Without community, uh, from the base uh, community, there's no uh, development. Or I can say that you can develop, but it will be slow. Uh, first of all, we have to educate those at the base tourism to understand of the uh, our, our, our goal and yeah. why we, we do need to do this. Uh, many of them, they, they really lack of, uh, how to say, awareness mm -hmm. on the tourism, on the destination. With, uh, we need to take uh, some time to educate and to uh, raise uh, all the concern to them to, mm -hmm. so that they understand. When they positively to join us, of course, any development or movement can make faster and easier because they will be committed to do it by themselves at their uh, home place, right. at their uh, you yeah. know community. Yeah. So as long as the community that stand together, of course, things can happen. Mm. But without community, no way. I can, for me personally, I say without community, that's no way. And of course, you can do it, but it will be roughly and slowly. It will take so much time to do it. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Back to your question, you raised a very very interesting points on, and it's not just interesting but very critical on uh, ego t not ego tourism alone but sustainable tourism because mm -hmm. that the future of tourism yeah. globally mm -hmm. uh, so far it, it's quite news concern for many of us because mm -hmm. we don't it's, it's, we don't actually know oh, where okay. to start and mm -hmm. what kind of method that we actually need to take mm -hmm. i think mm -hmm. different stakeholders will work on it but for mm -hmm. you personally as a tour operator you might have seen this process yeah and then how we have been doing uh, to make sure this mm -hmm. sustainable tourism yeah. will be going forward smoothly. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Exactly. Um, currently, in the uh, European uh, Union, uh, com uh, European community, so they're really doing a lot, and they have brought all the efforts to uh, protecting our environment, mm. to protecting the destination. So, where as the um, the uh, European tourists travel, they always consider about the impact. Mm. So a single dollar they spend, they have to think what is the impact mm. from their single dollars. So they're very, very careful with it. Mm. So obviously it is, I would suggest that um, in terms of sustainability for the long-term uh, sustainable tourism, mm. um, we have to be uh, designed, to be ready and designed. And uh, in the place where it should be protected, of course, they, currently we have, uh, the government have already the, uh, the plan to manage, but uh, we still are not practical. Mm. So we do need to see clearly uh, to divide the option, the place where to be protected, it really yeah, protected. Right. The place that to be allowed for any activity have to be uh, clearly announced and make it uh, specifically and uh, clarify on it for 
community in the mm. domestic area and the people from the uh, like uh, industry involved in the industry so that they know exactly then this area is really protected without any back and forth and with explanation yeah. back and forth mm-hmm. so when you come up to just only to choose that explanation from time to time of course you yeah. will take for year to explain but if you start to do it and to practice it of course they will be clear as the, uh, you know it always refer to the policy so as long as you have the policy and you have uh, confirmed it that a is a b is b yeah. so we have to be specifically in that yeah. so sustainability mean that um, at every single destination we have to be uh, like chosen mm. of what kind of activity to be add up to our product mm. as a uh, tour operator we are very careful right now yeah, yeah. so uh, before we send our client to the destination before we choose the activity to our product mm. we have to think about the client's mind the characteristic of the tourists from where uh, their original uh, country when the where they are from mm. so their original uh, native uh, country let's say from the uh, european market yeah. from uh, the most developing country what they have in mind what the uh, what it really uh, push them inspire them to visit our country mm. That's right. so we know we know already that many of european tourists they love our culture That's they right. love our people they love our country mm. it's not because of anchor what That's right. yeah. because the people like you yeah. so when they meet you and they smile and you yeah. warm heart it welcome them so this they want to see mm. so what behind that and what are beside that mm. So at the, at the destination like in Simbriam, we have many activity in the community, in the village, which we can be uh, chosen to, to be add up on the activity. So first of all, in a product, you mainly say that Angkor Wat is the one in the destination, yeah, yeah. of course, the primary destination, yeah, right? Yeah. So we do need a secondary option. So what is a secondary option? Secondary option is like uh, you have to add up to make a taste into the product that right. people will feel touch. Before we feel that it truly experience a lifetimes, yeah, yeah. when they travel thousand miles from home, they are not only to see Angkor, of course. Mm. So like ox cart, for example. Yeah. So we do we do use the ox cart, ox cart to transport them for 15-20 minutes in the countryside, and to view all the landscape surrounding, mm. and this really give them some emotions, you know, like a real emotion during the ride, yeah. even in the sun. But they say, oh, it really experience. Okay, taste of the local cuisine. Gastronomy. gastronomy so yeah. gastronomy is one of the option mm. so we should choose and select from the option we are at the destination available at the local uh, village or community what is really the specialty they have available in their region mm. so right That's now right. i really thank to uh, chapna the one yeah. of the the yeah. lady become yeah. now very uh, well very known famous, and yeah. she opened her restaurant in phnom penh right. right now yeah. she had done correctly and i really support that in this good even though that's for her own some uh, part of mm. the business or some for the community yeah. but obviously she uh, collect all the information and compile in a book and this will be benefit to our community for the long term so right that we should choose specifically from the village or community have to find out what is really a unique a rare a rare activity mm. a unique and rare that no other place have it mm. such as like uh, the community which they do uh, every year in bakong um, like catching fish yeah, in the pond yeah, okay yeah, so yeah, in bakong so this is it's one of the unique mm. in the area so yeah. why don't we use that to be uh, practical and we put into our product mm. So people not to to join to uh, fishing by themselves, but the activity okay, will show yes. them and bring uh, some impression and interaction with them, so that they understand. Oh, why this such activity yeah. use just a small basket and uh, something a fish trap to catch like that. Mm-hmm. So the technique of doing so it teach them mm-hmm. and bring them, you know, like to attract right. them to be back. Mm-hmm. They want to see and to explore and to understand, right? Yeah. So this, this, this are one of the sustainable uh, mm-hmm. tourism yeah. that we have to focus on and never forget about it. Yeah. There's still many options, and uh, I just just say mention a few, but uh, there are many many things available That's in right. Cambodia. Right. Yeah, this is very important value added to tourism experience, yeah. and I think that what they are thinking for. But 
another question on community side because you also raise a very very important uh, issue that often face with all I think most of tourism uh, I think dependent country mm -hmm. including Cambodia mm -hmm. like this the, the collective arrangement between yeah. uh, the, the community that have yeah, sure, many sure. tourism products to, yeah. uh, to actually to provide to mm -hmm. offer to the mm -hmm. tourists mm -hmm. who come to visit the country mm -hmm. but I think the linkage the, the income linkage often yeah. flow and then E and equally mm -hmm. distributed, maybe the hotel will receive more, yeah. while the local sure, community sure. receive less. But based on your experience, how how have you been working with the local community and explaining them? And are they welcoming our initiative and that they want to work more in promoting mm -hmm. the tourism, or they yeah, just sure, concerned sure. because they will not be the one who benefit benefiting from the very yeah. initiative? Yeah. yeah, right. Thank you for this very uh, touch questions and. Um, as a private sector, uh, we have been uh, doing a lot uh, this, with this as well. And personally, we uh, ourselves, yeah. we went to the village and we talked to the villagers and the people in the community to educate them, to raise the awareness of the des uh, destination about the tourists and uh, the potential, the interest for that they can uh, be uh, uh, taking part in to make it happen. Yes, yes. And in terms of generate local economy, mm. generate inject the economy into the family in a base community. So um, I have been um, observed and uh, myself, uh, we see that uh, there's uh, many disparity um, which um, we have separate uh, community to community. Um, this fit also with the government that mm. uh, the government have touched but not really fully hand. So um, for, my, for my suggestion or my uh, view, I see that if government really uh, have a full hand uh, into it, mm. collaborate with the private sectors, right. and because private sector, we have all full scale of uh, human resources and uh, experience in the industry. Most of us in my generation, we are over twenty years in the tourism industry, and we know where is the uh, uh, the problem is. You know, from the small uh, corner, you know, we, we know from every corner. So, yes. um, uh, if, if we open the, the the page, you know, we open the page, the new page, and yeah. we can join force. I can we can accept to reality hmm. and together to work together but people uh, to get people working together is not easy I that's can right, say right. um, but people concerned with benefit hmm. with benefit yep. as long as you, you they know and they are aware that from this they will get this yeah and then the, they are motivated to do it you know and then they personally they will put their hand and their uh, himself you know all wisdom all the uh, thought all yeah. you know into it and yeah. um we have been discussing uh before like um how can we uh, put the community the community to to, to work together yeah. and it took some time uh, not really uh, successful because uh, still some uh, like negative mindsets from those uh, they always think about their own benefit um this question, I can say that it will take some time the, that uh, we need to be involved with the government and the, in the institutions mm. together with our private sector together to collaborate and we push forward without uh, fear and uh, without thinking about uh, individual benefit. Mm. If we, we don't think about individual benefit as priority, I think uh, this will be happen. Because um, the problem is uh, happen with the uh, personal interest only. So yep. when you That's come right. to the personal interest and no participation yep. at the same time, That's right. if, like, like you, if you think about your own uh, mm -hmm. interest, your personal benefit, of course, I will not collaborate with you. I will not for sure. But if you think that your own personal uh, interest, you keep aside yeah. and you think about the community, about everyone together for everyone for our country for our community of course yeah. everyone will join force uh, from somewhere around you know and later on and yeah. you have a referral and you have a connection and you build up this right. up to build a trust between you and me or between everyone yeah. in the community yeah. so this is very important at the same time uh, with the government as well i think um you have to uh, you know to lower down a little bit to humble to the people and mm. People need yeah, to, to, to get uh, from heart to heart and to speak from heart to yeah. heart uh, what they really need and what they need can support and mm. so on. You know. mm. So this, without this, uh, there's no collaboration. I, I believe that for years we have been talking about it and it's not a first question. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Saret. You yeah. set lights on many, yeah. many important yeah. issues that we have yeah. been trying to yeah. figure out. My second to last question, because 
we talk about ecotourism, sustainability and mm. stuff, but one of the points that we also need to talk about is the homestay and the services that would be able to be given to the mm -hmm. tourists. But I'm not sure here in Siem Reap, has there been a very effective and workable homestay so far? Like many tourists can actually get access to it easily. And yeah, I, I see that uh, there, are, there are many homestay actually beside Enco. They have a homestay in uh, Kampung Kleang, mm. uh, currently being uh, booked fully by mm. uh, many of many the tourists. European tourists. Oh. And if you go to uh, Kampung Kleang, you see the homestay there supported by many of German tourists, mm. uh, FIT, like couple, family, they enjoy it. So uh, actually, like I said, uh, sustainable tourism uh, really work uh, for they in support. the in the European tourist mind. mind yeah. They support for sustainable growth, sustainable tourism, mm. and they support the community. But uh, obviously, uh, the homestay develop is just on uh, the, the limit basis. Yeah, yeah very limited. It's still not on the house, it's not uh, available at all times, so it's not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah, the homestay, yeah. the community itself is not sustainable. Mm. So you cannot talk about sustainable tourism. Mm. I see. So when you talk about sustainable tourism, it means that the business support, even the supply chains, mm. the local support local. Did you buy the product from local? <laughs> maybe not. Maybe issue. you buy product from Thailand, or you buy product from China, mm. or maybe raw material or anything that is not from the local resource. So this is something that we have to think about. So when we talk about sustainable tourism, sustainability, we have to think about, like I mentioned earlier, yeah. the impact to environment. So how is the management of the waste from the homestay? Mm. Where you throw all the rubbish, right? And from the benefit you make from the business, uh, do you share the benefit to Maybe the nearby yeah. community around there? The management among the community, it is fairly managed. <laughs> you share all the benefit to everyone there who commit to join yeah. together. So these all are the questions. In terms of that, um, the, uh, the majority of the uh, business in a, in, a, in a family level, I can see that uh, they're doing by feeling, by emotion, by yeah, feeling. Yes. Sometimes they do it good, sometimes yeah, they do it bad, yeah. and even don't know how to provide a sustainable service to, to tourists. Some tourists expecting uh, yeah, the, yeah. the service yeah, with yeah, the, yeah. the as per expectation, the demand. Yeah, yeah. But then when they experience this, uh, the service provided, it's just like at the below level. Mm -hmm. So this, this is something that we have to educate and to raise uh, awareness to yeah. them that the importance of customer service, mm. the importance of sustainable tourism, and how to be practiced, to bring it to practice. Mm. Yeah. Without long-term practice, without plan, without goal, so that it's not success. Mm. Yeah. It is really, really, really good points, but when it comes to uh, promoting sustainability concept among themselves, yeah. especially local community. I'm not sure if, do you think that we still lack like people who have this idea and the work that we need to do is raising awareness, of course, but maybe mm -hmm. the other more important or uh, sustainable promotions of mm -hmm. this idea amongst those local communities is yeah, still limited yeah. or maybe we're lacking this yeah. this work yeah. so far yeah. from, from your perspective. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we have some uh, good uh, wisdom uh, sought from people from the industry. They have uh, experience who have worked in the industry for years. Mm -hmm. They have good idea. They have got some good idea which uh, most of them, they also travel to the nearby country. The experience from abroad, mm -hmm. from the uh, European community, they know how to do it. But obviously, um, um, there are so many factors that we can only, only just only stick to one, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, um, like um, some of investors, they only do it by feeling, right? When they see, oh, the number of flights coming mm -hmm. into Siem Reap, to Cambodia, more. So, they just develop in, in a couple of months, they build it and completely yeah, without making any survey or statistic and uh, the trend, how the tourist trend and expectation for the future and so on. Mm. Um, obviously, we see that uh, many of the owners who invest in a business, they just have money. From those who have from the rich family or they have, they have the money to invest it, but without true skill. They don't personally have skill in that. Mm. So when they hire someone to do it, 
to be manager or man management in a uh, company and that so on and the lack of training and That's lack right. of practice so that that is not the way that to uh, be sustainable for management and for the business so us the long uh, the owner do not have knowledge, knowledge yeah. do not have uh, experience or any knowledge about that industry and you cannot just rely on the second hand or third hand or fourth hand people who just coming in and uh, they do it very leisurely and you know without uh, commitment without clear plan and uh, in terms of development for our uh, future for our community so the only thing about a short-term benefit mm. to bring yeah. out the benefit from the short-term business and this is why we see many business open and close open and close mm. um, this really happened a lot in Cambodia I can say uh, you can see at before COVID also after COVID they don't care when the, they see that the pork is coming so they just open it for a couple mm. of times mm. like uh, for a short while short-term business they bring in a business and then they close it mm. they transform to other so then we see that okay many many business open established but at the end when you count exactly how many so practical yep. how many still operate mm. this is the big question mm. yeah so first of all uh, i can say that uh, you have to look to the resources mm. resources in human resource is very important people who have a positive mindset mm. who really positively concentrate on the business in the development before they uh, invest into that decide to put their fund into that you have to make sure that they really understand the business well and the goal of the business. Mm. Yeah. So education, knowledge, and of course the yeah. resources in yeah. not just tourism industry, but when it comes to running business, you need yeah. to have a, sure, sure. at least adequate knowledge mm. in this. Mm -hmm. I think that will be my last question, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah. I think uh, we have discussed a lot of points mm. related to how and uh, in what way we can actually push forward the tourism industry in our country mm -hmm. and of course some issue remain to be done and uh, there's a lot of things that we have seen as a positive part but of course a long journey mm -hmm. we all know but yeah your just focus on your message to maybe the other stakeholder and maybe younger generation or those who are very enthusiastic about tourism development mm -hmm. they want to join hand and they want to be a part of this campaign because it's mm -hmm. not just simply about a national campaign to sure, promote sure, tourism sure. what should they do to be a part of the very very ambitious goals mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. our our mm -hmm. nation i would mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. yeah this is a very uh, good uh, message uh, to the generation because of course uh, we cannot rely on a single person or rely on a single leader who yeah. can uh, build this whole world you know okay. so we need yeah. all hand from uh, all uh, level of the people from uh, across the country from any uh, source you know so to, to participate together but be, be, before we, we, we uh, put the hand into that we need the individual have adapt to the knowledge of specific skill or specific industry at uh, development can be practiced can be uh, made mm -hmm. depend on uh, a specific skill we have from individual for instance, like in tourism industry, you cannot uh, study accounting and you, you do uh, tourism. Yeah. So this is obviously a spoil because uh, <laughs> people only count number and you cannot do in the, you know, yeah, in the project uh, yeah, for this. Different. I can say um, we can still uh, focus on some time to uh, educate people to understand the, the potential and the, uh, uh, the importance of uh, tourism industry. Many people before were talking um, about different industry like they're talking about banking, they're talking about the uh, construction, designing, or they're talking about aviation sector, or they're talking about many, many. and people overlooking of tourism. Mm. And when you come to tourism, what is really tourism? Mm. Maybe, maybe some of you, maybe you got to uh, only small points from that. Oh, tourism. tourism is really a big scope, and tourism, it really play a very big role in mm. the uh, national yeah. economy. Yeah. A single person, the single traveler who travel to Cambodia, they bring a lot of economy. They spend all the money to everywhere, and this this really create rapidly economy to the community yeah. and inject a lot of fund to our national GDP. Yeah. So this is very important that they have to understand. So from the beginning, they have to have uh, educate. They have to have the knowledge about what is tourism. 
why tourism is so important. Yeah? yeah. So when they come to this point, they will start to study to the element. What are the element combined in tourism? Hmm. Yeah. So when they use, they start to understand this. Of course, they will put their desires, hmm. and they will inspire. You know, to yeah, join yeah, positively yeah. from their heart. Yeah. As long as people doing things by heart, of course, I see the good result will happen when they come with the heart with and heart. mind. Yeah. So when they don't really participate by heart or by mind, of course, it's not going to happen. Mm. Yeah. That's right. You agree with me? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, in this question, I can say um, we have to uh, educate them. Mm. So from across the uh, industry, like educational industry. sector, yeah. like uh, school, from high school, from university, from yeah. across uh, all yeah. institutions yeah. to yeah. educate the people and to um, bring the people to understand at least that Angkor Wat, we have our wonder in Siem Reap, mm. Angkor Wat, we have our natural resource. Uh, like Mekong, Cruz, Tunlesa, and uh, yeah, how to uh, you know transform those resources to benefit for our community, to benefit for our country. Mm. So when they understand the benefit from all those resources and make use of the resources very well, they will be uh, yeah. happily to join with us. Yeah. But this we need a lot of uh, you know um, uh, time to educate and advocate with the government as well that. Uh, we need a strong hand from the government, right. uh, need time from the government to, to, to strongly support in That's them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, this is the, the long way I can say to educate people is not taking for a couple of years. It will be taking uh, some time for years, you know, like uh, to until they, they, they get understanding in yeah. this. And of course, the, the, the force of the youth is very important because the youth is the new bamboo shoot which yeah. uh, can replace all of us because we are moving ahead in a generation to generation. But for me, my short message is that as long as they, firstly, they have to educate themselves uh, to be positively, to think about our community. Firstly, they think about themselves, mm. to build themselves to be a good person, a good youth in the society, in the family, or a good student in the school. And then they will be the good people in the community, yeah. and then they'll be the good citizen in the country. So as long as they are becoming a good citizen in the country, they will be the person that the community and the country need. And the family will cheerily you know, support them with financially and timely, and so everything That's will right. happen together at the same time. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank Sirit, you. Yeah. for your time. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. I think this is the end part of our interview. Uh, thank you so much for staying with us until the end of this interview. Thank you. Thank you.